Hello and good evening. This is going to be a quick video tutorial on the address resolution protocol. And specifically, this is going to be a CCNA level tutorial, uh, a class that I teach uh, for the Cisco Networking Academy. One of the students asked when I'm pinging initially, the first time I try to ping, it fails and then there is success. And so we're going to go ahead and take a look at why it is that that happens when you run the ping command you get the period followed by four exclamation marks and we're I've got a uh, a Mac PC here that we can use and we're also going to go ahead and use just the switches as well so as you can see here I'm on switch one and so let's go ahead and get this configured with the host name switch one and we're going to configure VLAN one with an IP address we'll simply use 1.1.1.1 for switch 1 and then we're going to go ahead over to switch 2 and these switches have multiple connections as you can see between the two switches so we'll do from privilege exec to global config and we'll set the host name to switch 2 and then we're going to go into VLAN, whoops, VLAN 1 and the IP address for switch 2 will be 1.1.1.2 now I'm going to do a do debug ARP on switch 2 and I'm also going to do a do debug ARP on switch 1 and this is going to give us additional information that we would not typically see and so as a result of not seeing that information it really doesn't explain or give you any details as to why that first ping is failing and so let's go ahead and whoops get that out of there let's go ahead and ping 1.1.1.2 which is the switch directly connected to switch 1 all right and so you can see we've got some it actually threw the uh, through the output up on the screen so typically you would see this under the ping command but we had the debug on so here is the period which represents a failure followed by four successes and so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the output that we have here and kind of dissect this so as you can see let me make sure okay good we've got a nice red line there so as you can see immediately there's an ARP so it says creating incomplete entry for IP address 1.1.1.2 interface VLAN 1 IP ARP sent request with the source address and that's the switch that we're on right that's the source IP for the switch that we're on along with the MAC address for the switch that we're on that represents VLAN 1 the destination right is 1.1.1.2 and that's the destination IP and here you can see we do not know the MAC address so if you remember, ARP, which stands for Address Resolution Protocol, is when you know the IP address, but you want to know the Layer 2 address or the MAC address for the host that you're trying to reach. Because again, at Layer 2, the IP address is not sufficient. In fact, the IP address is a layer 3 construct, right? Where at layer 2 on the local segment, your switch or your PC is going to have to figure out what the MAC address is of the address that you're going to. And so address resolution protocol says, hey, draw a line here. Hey, I know the destination address and it's 1.1.1.2 but I need some help here I don't know the hardware address or the layer 2 MAC address for that host so as you can see here it says IP ARP received right 
source 1.1.1.2 and here is the Mac right and it's coming back to the destination of 1.1.1.1 which is this switch so while this is happening right here while these steps are happening right we get that initial failure that period right there is the initial failure and it'll sort itself out here when it receives that ARP information now it knows this is the MAC address that the frame needs to be forwarded to and so then you'll receive whoops you'll receive your successes and so those ARPs are now successful right so let me clear the screen here and so that is why that first ping fails and it fails because it does not have or the, in this case switch one does not have the destination MAC address for switch two as you can see here it sent out destination 1112 and then it's all zeros and so what this request is saying is hey I'm switch one at IP 1111 with this MAC address and I need the information for switch 2 right I need the layer 2 MAC address information for switch 2 and then you can see here that request is received and now we have that information and therefore our ping succeeds so subsequent pings are going to all succeed and what do you notice did not happen here we don't have any debug information for ARP because this information if I do a show whoops if I do a show MAC address table right let's take a peek here for VLAN 1 the MAC address we were given ended in 66 Charlie 0 and that MAC address will now be cached inside the MAC address table and so subsequent attempts to ping switch two, whoops, wanted to ping there. Subsequent attempts to ping switch two are successful without having to ARP or use the address resolution protocol to determine what this layer two address is. All right, now let's take a look at switch two and see what information switch two can tell us and what switch two saw during those first initial pings. Bring my pin back over here. So you can see that it was an IP ARP received request. So this is the request from switch one, right? The source was 1111, and here is the MAC address for switch one, right? The destination was to 1112 and so that's why it was received because again we're looking now at switch 2. So it ignored gratuitous ARP from switch 1 and then it says right here IP ARP sent response from source 1112 and there is the MAC address that we see on switch 1. So this was the response to the ARP request from switch one and switch two replied with this information. So sent reply source 1112 and then here is the MAC address that corresponds to this IP address. So here is the layer two address that corresponds to the layer three address 1.1.1.2. Okay, And the destination, who are we sending this reply to? we are sending it over to switch one right because that is switch one's information so let's go ahead and take a look you can also see actually before i clear the screen here you can also see that it appears switch two didn't have an entry for switch one either because it says creating incomplete entry for ip address 1111 and it's going to add in there was an arp here and it's now going to add in you can see it says sent request from switch 2 with switch 2's Mac to the destination of switch 1 so switch 2 also needed to learn about switch 1 you can see here it's all zeros 
So switch two at this point does not know switch one's address and then it receives a reply back from the source switch one with switch one's information. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in, let's clear our screen here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a, uh, a very old MacBook um, and the MAC address should show up here. Let's see what happens. We're going to see if we can duplicate this. All right, so we should see a message on port 47 pop up here, and we do. And so now if I do a do show MAC address table, let's see if in port 47 we have the MAC address. We do not. So I'm going to quickly come back over here to switch one, and we're going to try to ping 10.10.10.10, which is the IP address. And we'll see it may be going on the other side. It might be going through the spanning tree. And I'm pretty sure that it is. All right, so we've got some debug output on both switches here. So we just plugged in a new PC and the IP address of that PC is 10.10.10.10 .10 and so you can see here it catches the request and I'm looking to see where the other output is. It looks like it failed multiple times and only got one out of five and you can see why because while we were pinging right over on switch 2 it was running through the spanning tree states of listening learning and then forwarding so we had to wait and while we were waiting there's one of the periods from the failure here's the next to last so that would have been the fourth ping request and then on the fifth ping request right one out of five was successful but again the key here is you can see that once again there is an IP ARP request sent with the source of switch one, with switch one's MAC for VLAN one, to the destination, 10, 10, 10, 10. And so what switch one is saying here is it's saying, I'm trying to get to 10, 10, 10, 10, and I know the IP address. So I'm gonna leverage the address resolution protocol because I need to resolve this address right this 10 10 10 I need to resolve that and get the MAC address I need the layer 2 address for this host at 10 10 10 10 then we receive a reply back from the host that MacBook that got plugged in and we get its MAC address back and there is the MAC address right there and it's coming back with a destination to 1111 which we know is switch one. So hopefully this clears up any confusion and provides a little clarity around what is happening oftentimes when you plug a new host in or you interconnect switches and then you issue the ping command and that first ping fails. And in this in this type of scenario, and this is very common, oftentimes you'll see that request, that initial request, will fail. Another instance where you see this happen, where the first ping will fail and then you'll get success, is sometimes when you're trying to ping something that is not on your local network and it has to ARP out for the default gateway if for whatever reason that MAC address entry had timed out. And so if I do a show MAC address table, on switch one we're going to see right here for VLAN one that was the MAC address that we were given for the MacBook at 10 10 10 10 that was plugged in over on switch two and let's see what switch two saw and you could see it here where there were multiple requests right receive requests receive requests receive where you can see clearly switch one right and I think if you hold down I think it's control I can get just that now 
So you can just see that switch one is sending requests to the destination of 10, 10, 10, 10. Now, we don't see the reply go back on switch two, but we do see that reply come back here on switch one. And so again, we were doing just simply debug ARP, and this gave us the information for the address resolution protocol. So again, this was a quick CCNA level tutorial on why you see typically that first ping fail and then subsequent attempts succeed. All right, I hope this clears up any confusion and have a great evening.